Hello, welcome to Local Lives. Today we're joined by a special guest. Hi, my name is Melissa Victor, and I'm from the Stolo Nation in BC. Awesome. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm a beater. Uh, I'm a wife. I'm a mother uh, residing here in the Treaty 7 area. Um, originally, I moved out here from uh, Ontario for better supports for my my son, who was diagnosed with autism, and I've been out here ever since. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about your artist? Uh, a couple of years ago, my uh, what started this whole journey, especially when it came down to beading, is um, a friend was getting rid of some beads, and she was like, is there anybody out there who wants some beads? And um, I was like, I do. <laughs> And I messaged my cousin right away, and I was like, uh, "Hey, Monique, can you teach me how to how to bead? I, I would really like to learn." Um, and she said yes, and it just it it just ballooned and grew from there. I started looking at at techniques as, as much as I can, and I would learn teach myself how to do that and it just like I said it just grew from there <laughs> how has it impacted your cultural identity um I feel like it's it's helped me identify more with my identity and helped me reconnect in such a an amazing an amazing way um just in regards to uh, self exploration brought me home and brought me down in, into my heart. That's wonderful. How did you get into cedar weaving? Um. So my aunt came down uh, to visit with uh, to visit my cousin, uh, and she brought this these beautiful headbands uh, that she was she was giving to her niece and nephew um and she was showing them to me and I thought oh my god I would really love to do that I I wish I had the time I wish I had the money just to be able to de be down home and to to learn to learn how to do that and um while I was on mat leave I I said this is the perfect time for me to take the time to go home and um I've been talking with this friend of mine Autumn and she she was like Mel you can apply for a grant to go home and do this and I was like no I can't and I I started talking with the Calgary Arts Development and they said yes you can <laughs> um so I just had to send in a um a grant proposal to them, um, which was only a, a micro grant, but to me that was a million dollars um, for the invaluable teachings that I had done. And um, I went last year, and it was such an amazing experience. I uh, the whole way drive home, uh, I was actually smelling sage just guiding me on my path saying this is what you need to do and um and when I got there it was just such a such a wonderful experience and that's where I made my first cedar hat down there and I I gifted it to my my daughter she took it right away so it's like okay it, it's your hat <laughs> This is the this is the hat uh, that started the whole journey of cedar weaving. How long did it take you to, to weave it? Uh, I think we were there for three four hours. Holy smokes! Yeah, that's pretty quick. Yeah, so it's pretty good for my my first my first hat. Let's say so. <laughs> How many have you made since? Um, I actually haven't made any since just because 
Uh, I'm still waiting uh, to receive the the hat form from my my teacher, which I'm going to be going back to go pick up. So these are part of the second project that I have done with the Calgary Arts Development. Um, when we, um, when the missing children from the residential school uh, children were found, um, I saw all the the shoes on the shoes at the city hall, and I, I kept saying to myself, "There needs to be a pair of medicine shoes there." And um, so this is just a mock-up of the shoes right now, um, but I am making 13 pairs of cedar medicine shoes. Um, and then all the shoes will have medicines attached to them, so it'll help the children who have been found heal on the other side. So it's been, it's been quite the journey uh, making these. I, when I made them, I had a lot of smudge uh, and prayers going during that time. And when I was done, I actually, my prayers were answered just because, sorry, <laughs> um, a cousin who reconnected with us, uh, she said, hey, Mel, like, next time you're in town, you need to message me because I'm going to come down and I'm going to teach you our ways of cedar weaving. So it was like, Right? Uh, just having that acknowledgement, especially out in the universe, to answer those prayers so quickly after finishing these shoes. It, it just, I know that, you know, my, my journey is not ending when it comes down to cedar weaving. It's just beginning. Yes, yes. How long did those take to me? Eight hours. Wow. Yeah. Um, I didn't, um, as you can see, like they're very rough. Um, so this was just a, me trying to figure out how to shape them and um, like what I would be doing when I'm doing the 13 pairs. Um, it's like prototype. But yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, and I'll, I'll know what I wanted to do to do with the medicine um, because that was the hard part just trying to figure out what I'm going to be doing with the medicine originally in my proposal I said that I was going to um, weave the medicine into the shoes but with the shoes being wet while weaving them it wouldn't have gone very well <laughs> especially dry medicine being put in wet cedar oh you wet it before oh yeah so the cedar uh, we have to soak it in order for it to be malleable that's crazy. Yeah. Is this sinew? Yes. So, and I've also made some cedar hearts. Um, uh, and I've made tassels for earrings. <laughs> so this has all happened over the last year? Yes. That's pretty recent. Yes. Um, when I put my mind to it and my heart in it, I... It, the outcomes are pretty good. <laughs> Do you have any advice for any Indigenous who are looking to make those first steps into reconnection? Um, always have the good intention of wanting that that good reconnection with the with your community and with those teachings. It's just it it's such a humbling experience. Uh just learning the learning these teachings and for me I wanted to do this to teach my children because this is such a, a lost art that is just re-emerging in such a beautiful way. What do you think your ancestors would say if they could see the work you're doing now? Things are definitely changing in our world like we're trying to hold on to those those old ways and we're changing like having a different way of doing things is okay to do that and um having that protecting it as well is just as important how has your creative journey impacted your life um 
that's a hard one to answer. Um, I th- I think it's brought me down um, more into myself, um, and as well, like I, for a couple of years, um, like I said, I've been beating since I was twenty eighteen, and um, a couple of people were like, "Mel, you need to sell your earrings. They're amazing." And I'm like, no, I'm not good enough. I, I don't I don't know if I could do that. And now that I've, you know, taken a couple of business courses, I'm like, okay, I'm doing this. I'm going to start my business and sell Indigenous jewelry and art. It, and the, the connections that I've been making with people and just, you know, the, the positive things that they've said just about my my jewelry and just seeing what I've done. It it I know that I I'm doing the right thing being out there in the community trying to sell my work. Do you have any advice for any uh indigenous who are looking to start that business venture? Um let go of that fear. That the fear was actually what was holding me back and I also, the other thing as well is educate yourself about running a business. It's, it's not easy. Like, you know, there, you're wearing many hats in, in this journey and it's not just doing what you love. It's, you know, the business, the marketing, um, being the storefront, like there's all that. How has it been being an entrepreneur as an Indigenous woman? Um, it is, it's quite the learning curve, uh, in regards to learning what my niche market is, um, and trying to stick to that versus I'm going to go to this, I'm going to go to that. It got to the point where I actually got pretty run down. (laughs) How did you overcome that burnout? Um, lots of talks with my husband. (laughs) Um, him also reminding me, no, he, you need to be home too. Like, like I, I need that help and you can't do, can't overwork yourself. So a beautiful partnership. Yes. Yes. And it, it's the same for him, him being an artist too, like just wanting him to do what he loves in order for me to do what I love. How has your small business been received by the community here? Um, I feel like it's been so such well received just because of the fact that I'm offering cedar in in medicine in in earrings and I'm repurposing the stuff that would be left over uh in you know, very impactful way versus, you know, being put somewhere out, like in the garbage or, you know, back into the ground, like just very positive ways. Absolutely. So back to like beading and uh, the cedar work, what sort of emotions do you feel when you finish a piece? It's usually, oh, like, oh, yeah. I like I saw this and I knew what I was doing. Um like even when it came down to my first beaded pair of tassel earrings, it was just like I I gifted those away um to my to my cousin and it's just such an amazing feeling of relief. Um like I have something imagined and I I keep on going until it, that vision is complete. <laughs> I never, like, besides having, like, with the fringe earrings where they require, like, a, a pattern, I never really follow any, any pattern. It's really, it's just me, like, okay, I, I'm going to do it this way. Oh, no, I, I guess I need to figure out a different way how to do that. So it's just, it's all from sitting down and going, okay, this is how I'm going to do it. Pretty incredible. Do you have a favorite piece you've made? Um, 
actually it's actually the earrings that I made made um that I'm wearing right now um where inspired using the cedar as in in jewelry yeah and these ones were made long I think in 2019 always looks yeah it's like four years ago yeah so I had uh a couple pieces of cedar um roses lying around and I had trimmed uh, a rose from a ring that I had made. I didn't make the rose, but something I would really like to love to learn. But I had leftover bits, and I was like, "What should I do with it?" And my cousin was like, "Well, make earrings out of them." So I, I end, I did. <laughs> wow, cedar plays a big role in a, one of the work you do. Yeah, if it's not uh, in my my beaded items, I'll I to it with my seat with my resin what is resin um so resin is like a like a plastic like liquid plastic that you mix together and eventually hardens um and so all of the little bits and pieces that were left over from the weaving um i've actually reused into into the resin jewelry so there's cedar in them in the resin. Oh, so nothing at all goes to waste. Nothing at all. Wow. That's, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, can you speak on what is cultural appropriation versus cultural appreciation look like to you? For me, uh, appropriation is when a non-Indigenous person is making something that is traditional from us, uh, Indigenous people, and profiting off of that i don't really agree with that and appreciation is an indigenous person buying a pair of earrings and from an indigenous person who's made them and wearing them thank you like yeah <laughs> that's pretty straightforward yeah yeah uh, how do you see your business growing um i have I would like to be at uh, Indigenous Fashion Week. I I've told uh, Melanie that like she was actually she was actually she's my business mentor, and I was like, I chose you because of the fact that you've done such amazing things, and I want to be there too. I want someone wearing my cedar resin jewelry, uh, my cedar tassel earrings, at the fashion show. Um, and I, that is my goal. <laughs> How important is it to have that representation there to know that you can accomplish it? Um, just keep aiming for it. If it's not, if it's not going to happen now, it it will happen if you put your mind to it. Absolutely. Well, that's all the questions I have for today. Is <laughs> thanks for joining us. That's it for Lessa.